everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode what we're going to have a look at is um, Pneumaticraft Repressurized, which I think is the later version of that from for the 1.12 series of Minecraft. Um, so let's get started with that. So what you here see is some TNT and I put some obsidian underneath that. So what I'm going to do now is drop some um, iron ingots onto the obsidian and then blow it up. And I think Hopefully I'm not going to pick it up too quickly. <laughs> I did, I can tell. I just picked it up. It's gone into my uh, backpack. Which one will it be? I think it'll be the mining backpack. So I'm going to be quicker. I'll probably take my armour off. That might be the easiest solution to sort that one out, first of all. And then try that again. So that's in place now I'm just going to blow it up and stand back. <laughs> the obsidian's there basically just to not to do any damage but it does produce a little bit of um, pollution what well, it did last time didn't do anything this time so this time I've got oh it's done, done a little bit of damage <laughs> I was probably a bit too near this <laughs> but it hasn't done too much damage anyway so let's just uh, I'll repair that some other time <laughs> So now I'll just break this away, I don't need this anymore. So what we've been just done there is to make some compressed iron. Uh, doesn't take too long to get rid of this because this is where I think I'm going to build the plant. Because I've got something already set up below it. So if we have a look in, let's put my armor back on again now while I'm thinking about it. So now I should have some compressed iron. And it's probably gone into the backpack again, so look. Yeah, 46. So we lose quite a lot of the compressed iron. I haven't actually got all of the obsidian, but that's probably into this. Probably gone into this hopper. Yeah, it has. Look, there we are. I feel I'll keep it in there. Those are bits I've already prepared to see. Anyway, so we end up with about 46 compressed iron. So let's have a look at the uses of these compressed iron to start with. We can make these pressurized chamber glass. Well, we need to make a pressurized chamber to start with and we also need to make um and that's a basically a, a three by three by three structure so there are other components in here as you can see I, I was expecting them to be right at the beginning as it happens but i don't see it so we need a what's this one a heat frame a spawn a gag oh, i don't know what that one is actually it's something new we need some tubes so we need some tubes um so we're going to make some of those first of all. And we also need the repressurized bit. So let's go and have a look at that. In fact, I'll see you when I'm there. I've done a few bits and pieces around the base. Uh, not too much, but one or two bits and pieces. So let's have a look. Right, I've got, actually I've got in here the repressurized stuff. So what we would like to do is there's two pages of it. And I need to make these chambers here, like this pressurized wall. So basically, that makes 16. So you need two of these. We also need a pressurized chamber valve in order to fill, feed this stuff in. And we also need some of these tubes. So we'll start with some tubes. I probably don't need glass because the glass is actually in here. I'll make two sets of tubes, I think, to start with. We're using this all the time. And then we'll go and build. I've built all the bits anyway, but I'm going to make a few more of these because we're going to need these like that uh, what else do we need we need a, an air compressor to start with this is the one that basically produces air and for safety's sake I'm going to also make a valve to pressure valve which I can't see probably somewhere else um, bah, bah, bah. valve oh this one here the safety valve basically it's a safety valve so things don't blow up so let's go and start and do this. I've already made one of these, but let's make another one of those. So I need a furnace. Um, let's make another because it makes things go faster when you've got more than one of these because they're they're quite slow. So let's go and assemble this stuff. I'll see you when I'm there. Right, so I'm back again, and I've got all the bits I've taken out of there. So we need to assemble this pressure chamber. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some down some interfaces, and I'm going to feed this onto this hopper that you can see that you could see before me. And we're also going to put down some walls. So let's do those two first of all. Now these 
these interfaces go in the direction you put them down in. So, for example, if I want to prefer put it down here like that, that's the input side, and the other side is the output. It's got an I and an O on it just to help you. So you have to push it down on the way you want it to go, like like that. So this is the input. So I want it to go in here and out to the bottom, which is then going to go into the hopper. So all we're now going to build this thing up, and we're going to just do one more to start. Yeah, and it's a hollow chamber. Just mm, I'm trying to think what it reminds me of. To be honest with you, oops, I can't do that one, can I? So we'll put in the corners like this, and then we'll put on the on the roof like this. Oh, that was just slow. So that's the frame, and then in the middle of this frame, we're going to put the bits and pieces that we want. In fact, I think I'm going to put a frame on the top of this as well, so we don't like that. So we don't have to go on the top of it. And then we'll put some uh, inputs and outputs. Now, basically, the inputs and outputs are the valves, pressurized chamber valves, this one here. So the next one I want to do is I want to put it so I can put stuff in on this face, for example. Like that. No, that's the wrong one. That's where I put the air pressure in. Yeah, that's what I want to do there. That was the valve, as you can see. It's the the chamber valve that basically puts pressure into the chamber and where is the other one oh put it down here <laughs> no wonder i can't find it looking for this thing i put down before so we want to put stuff in on this face like this so i just basically put this down i hopefully that way will do yes it will good and then i just got some windows we can put some down some windows so we can see inside what's actually happening so there's one and when i put this window down now it will form and it comes up a new a new sort of layout and you actually get an achievement for that since i've already done it i don't get the achievement in again so what we have to do then is put into this pressurized air so we use these tubes to do that now the tubes have a, a limit the limit is five bar because they're not advanced tubes these are just basic the basic basic tubes that we've got so let's just come back down here a bit more and put down something like this and then we can put onto these 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 two air compressors. So we built one, and the other one's in this block just underneath here. Let's get it out. So here's the other one. Uh, the other bits will come up. We'll come to in a, in a short while, and we'll see what they do. Let's put the dirt over there. This this hasn't really changed too much from the original version of. Uh, pneumatic craft repressurized the bit that has changed a lot is the flowers the flowers have all gone so let's give this some stuff some pressure to start with we'll give it, put 32 in there and then put 32 into here like this and then this is going to start giving this thing some pressure as you it takes a while so what's it tell us at the moment it's got should tell me the pressure actually yes there we go so it's got 0 0.1 bar it will explode at at five bar so we've got to make sure we don't ex explode this thing so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put on this a valve so a, re a pressure relief valve i think the best place to do that was probably quite near to the beginning here like this place so what we do i'm not 100 percent sure about that. let's go and get that out of the chest actually i haven't got those out of the chest yet so i've put a, i made a couple of those and some other bits and pieces What do I actually need in this at the beginning? Probably this and some redstone. Well, it's going to dark, so I'll come back in a few seconds when it's daytime. Now, one difference with these safety valves that it didn't have last time was you actually you had to. It was a component. This time, it's just an add-on. So you put an add-on here like that, and then it's added that to there. So now this works with the redstone signal. So let's put down a redstone potentiometer here, like this. This is one way to give it a signal and it works with a redstone signal on top of this. It's not actually working at the moment because it's got no, it's zero. So let's look at this thing to start with. Right. So it's basically at the moment I've got a redstone value of zero. So I want to give this a redstone value of five times 0.5 would be 2.5. So if we give this a redstone value of six, then it should stop producing um it was to start releasing this at um 4.5 which is 7.5 minus 3. so let's just try that let's give this so we basically come along here and i want six so that's 
five six so if I right click this point here it moves the pressure up to that and then this should be giving a power of six which is what you can see now if I look on here it does actually tell me that the threshold is now 0 0.4 applied redstone is six and the pressure is 4.5 bar so when this gets up to 4.5 bar this this will release and it will stop the pipes blowing up because the pipes will blow up at five bar and that says max pressure five bar so we're up to 2.3 bar so now we're going to use this thing what it's for i think i've got with me a hopper i've actually got an omni hopper but i actually want a straightforward standard hopper and i think i've got one of those in here like this and we're going to put some iron into this and I should have got some iron with it. I'll go back and get some iron. See you in a second. Right, I've got some iron. So let's put the iron into here. Let's put it in uh, half a stack of it anyway. I probably could use the omnidirectional hopper because this one's a fast hopper. It And you can rotate it with a wrench. Now, obviously, we've got to build a wrench, but we need iron to do that. So let's have a look at the recipe for a wrench. Oh, while it's doing that, let's listen to this thing here because it's just opened up, as you can see here. And it's put the stuff in. And in fact, I think... it's coming out as iron which is not what i wanted to do i want to come out as compressed and the reason for that is because i messed up <laughs> well, that's unusual isn't it what i need to do is i need to configure this thing so it only outputs compressed iron uh and i can't because because this is in the way so let's break this here now unfortunately i've got some compressed iron with this let's have a look at this so at the moment it's got iron in here so what i want to do is filter this just have compressed iron in it and then I probably got to remove those to start with which we can do with the, the hopper so we'll put the hopper back over here like that and then we'll put the dirt back down again but i'll leave that just like that so i can just maybe i can just reach this hopper from no i can't maybe i can reach this hopper so what's happened now i've got those 32 irons back in it back in it let's try that again this time doing it right i should have remembered to do that in the first place but it's been a while since I've done this. Now we put those into there and they should get put into the chamber. So we can actually have a look at this gauge here. So you can see it's coming in here. So it's in the input gate. So when it gets to 32, it closes and then it opens up and they get put into here like that. So then we have one, well, hopefully there's 32 pieces of iron in there. And when that gets up to pressure, and at the moment the pressure's gone down to 1.6 bar because when the doors open it in the old version it didn't release much pressure but in this version it drops the pressure back down to zero so you lose all of that pressure so we have to wait till this gets to two bar i think it is for compressed iron or 2.5 i'm not sure which um it's nearly at two let's just have a look so if i can figure this out before it goes up so we'll look at the recipe for this in the pressure chamber so it is two bar so if we look at this now it's just there it goes it's just opened up the door and you can see this is now converted to compressed iron and then the pressure's dropped right back down again to zero so this time if we right click the uh underside of this let's go down again have to look can i actually see the unfortunately i can't see because of the hopper a bit if I remove that we will be able to see it so now we've got 15 16 17 uh, compressed iron and these these pressure doors require pressure for them to actually open so and that's actually also I think that's also new I'm not sure exactly whether the they they just worked before but now I've got my 32 compressed iron so we've got a stack of it you're gonna need a lot of this stuff I can tell you because it's just doing some of this stuff is quite a lot of a lot of work in fact i'm going to cover this up now once it's working you don't care you can cover it all up again there will be other things we make we make with this but uh there won't be very many let's put the dirt in here as it happens don't need that with me so these things are then just are you consuming fuel they're not producing any pollution that's one of the things that i've noticed they don't produce pollution in this at the moment anyway so the next thing we have to do we have to produce some tools and the most important one of the tools is the wrench and the wrench is this one here so 
actually there's nothing difficult here it's just some compressed air we've been making some of that and the air cylinder which is just compressed air one of these pressure tubes which is two compressed air and the glass and some redstone so we can make one of those which I've already done let's get it out of here now and it's actually already charged up or it's got a little bit of charge in it. you can see from here when you press 0.9 bar that's actually enough to do to do stuff with it so let's take away this hopper now a standard hopper like this and break this and put onto the, the the unidirectional hopper so the omnidirectional hopper this is this one so you can then simply right click this onto here like that and the, one of the advantages of this is it doesn't take a full face like that so that's the input and it says you can rotate if I look at this thing um, here if I also look at this one here for press shift so you can rotate this one I think it doesn't actually tell me I think you can rotate it with the, the hammer so if you right click it it rotates the input and if you shift right click it it rotates the output like basically like that so then you can change your hop your hopper layout to however you want it <laughs> but you have to have the wrench and then you have to charge it up so let's look at that next as well the charging station and the recipe for that one is also fairly straightforward just one pressure tube three bricks and three sl uh, cobblestone slabs that's not no big deal for to produce this one uh, so i haven't so i'll just produce this we'll put this onto over here like this and then all you do is you right click the tool onto this like that oops nope i don't do it like that <laughs> I, ri I right click it and then i put the the drill into this now it's going to get pressure so the pressure at the moment is four bar does it tell me what the pressure is 3.4 bar so this is now going to go up to 3.4 bar and at the moment it's 1.5 and going up and that increase is basically durability is related to the pressure and this thing can take a maximum of 25 bar no 10 bar i think just saying where it tells me that oh yes volume charging at 10 millibuckets per tick and I'm so this can go up to 25 the station and this can actually be go up to 10,000 so it's, it's getting there now it's nearly full uh, well at least it's full for the pressure that we've got when it's when it's full you get this warning going like this and it goes green so now it's full because the pressure is building up still in here because these are still running and this isn't this is not yet stable so there we are but as you saw when you right click this it turns things around now the next thing we're going to look at is the hard bit plastics no let's look at this first of all this is the gauge this tells you what pressure the things are running at so let's put this down here and it also produces a redstone signal and this works differently as you if you remember from last time or from the earlier versions you can put it on again like a just like that and it will also produce a redstone signal according to its value so let's put some redstone down here that's probably not a very good idea and if I can do it on this side maybe I can um, not happy with this let's just break this off and put it some other oops didn't mean it to do that because that's not going to release all the pressure out of it very fast let's put this one down here that joins up again I probably should have used the wrench to push push that off so let's try that again pressure gauge let's put the pressure gauge on somewhere it's not going to connect to anything here and then we can put the redstone down like this and as you can see it's got a power of seven now this thing should tell us it's emitting yes 3.9 bar so when it goes up to 10 it should admit a pressure of does it tell me no not really so it's now up to eight so then you can also use this into this input here to release things and you can also apply a redstone signal to these um, so let's just do that as well uh, this one should also be producing a redstone signal I think that you should be able to turn the generators off let's go and get a torch uh, redstone torch I'll be back in a second with the redstone torch well slightly wrong again 
I search the redstone announcement. I put down a lever with some redstone. I didn't change the redstone, so it's enabled with a high signal. That's what we want to do for this one, and they also want to do the same on this one, because you can have basically have a high signal, a low signal, or always. And it, by default, it was always. So let's just turn that to high signal like this, and then it, these two should turn off with a high signal. Now, what I re really want to do is to come over. As you can see, it's it's losing pressure when we're doing this. What I really want to do, this is now at power 8. So what I want to do is to feed this to a signal when it's got a power of 8. So we just need um, probably a redstone comparator. I don't know. I've got to figure it out. And next time we'll have a look at how I've done that. Probably a redstone comparator. I'm not sure which. Maybe even a um, redstone, automated redstone block for doing it. So these should burn out. Once these are burned out like that, should stop at 18. I hope it's not carrying on. If it does carry on, I'm <laughs> sorry, it ain't working. Because <laughs> it does look as though that, that is still burning down. And this one's still burning down. Let's remove the coal out of this one. No charcoal out of this one. And the charcoal out of this one. Let's just break this piece of redstone here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to put the redstone on top of it. No, I can't. Enable on high signal. Well, anyway, I'll sort that out another, another day. Maybe it doesn't work. I don't really know. We'll find out. So the next thing we have to do with this mod is we, anything else we want to do. We basically need com PCB components like this one. Empty PCB components. Uh, the very first time you make one of these, an empty one like this, seeing it's a failed PCB, a pressurized one. So we need to make one of these, we need some green plastic in a compressed iron, with a compressed iron ingot, in the pressure chamber at one and a half bar. Um, now green plastic, this is made with liquid plastic, this is where it's changed from the previous version, and uh, some colours. And it's showing here the Minecraft colours, but we can actually also use the Ferdinand Flowers colours. So let's go and get some of those ready to start with. Um, and we also need plastic. Now, <laughs> let's have a look at that. That's probably the most important bit. So if I look for the recipe for the plastic, obviously you can, I mean, it's already made, you can unpack it. But the refinery one's the one that we're actually interested in here. So we can produce plastic, 5 millibuckets of plastic from 10 millibuckets of LPG. So if I actually have a look at the uses of the um, refinery, all right, you can make water out of steam. That's, I think that's uh, just behaviour. So here we have hot crude. Now that comes in. So that produces heavy oil, light oil and LPG. So the LPG, the light oil and the heavy oil. So the heavy oil will produce oil residue, gasoline and lubricant. The light oil will produce diesel, kerosene, and gasoline. And the next one is the LPG, which produces plastic, naphtha, and natural gas. So you can see that that's 5 millibuckets, that's 5 millibuckets, and this is 10. So what do we actually get from the original hot oil crude? So we get 4, 3, and 3. So we're getting from the heavy oil, so we're getting 3 from 1. 100 millibuckets of hot crude. Basically, that's. I think we get around about 300 millibuckets of LPG. Let's go and have a look. Because in here, I've got this. I've been taking some hot crude. I took 16 buckets of um, crude from the other base. And so I've actually got 2,400 millibuckets of plastic, which is actually not very much. So we can take a bucket of this, like that, out of here. So we've got a, a bucket of liquid plastic now. So the next thing we need to do is to make that plastic machine, which is also not too difficult. We can do that. And it should already got one in here. This, the plastic, liquid plastic mixer. And let's have a look at the recipe for this one. It's all, again, it's compressed iron. Three pieces of glass makes this. Now that by itself needs a bucket of lava or something underneath it. <laughs> when I was trying, it says sneak film first. Let's have a look, it tells you. Is to use melt plastic into liquid plastic, okay? Well, we've already got sort of liquid pl plastic. But it should also tell us ab 
about the heating. It doesn't tell me there. So you have to heat it. Um, and you heat it with, we'll put this down, say, I suppose I can put it down anywhere actually, because it doesn't need heat from this. So let's put it down here. Like that. Have a look at the interface. It's actually got some liquid plastic in it. So we can put plastic into this in two ways. So we can either basically use a, uh, a liquid hopper like this. This one's empty. Or you can put that on the top. If you have a look at this, let's just put the liquid hop somewhere. Try putting it down on here like this. So it's got a blue face there. And on the back side, it'll have another face, which we can't see yet. So let's just turn it around so we can actually see it. I probably need to shift right click that one, don't I? It's actually the output. So that's, it doesn't, it's not so obvious, but it is actually the output. So that's really the orange face of this thing. So let's break that again. Can I shift right? No, I can't shift right click it, left click it. No, I can't. Let's break it normally with a pickaxe. So we can put this on top of this like this. Have to shift it, of course. And I actually really want look looking as though the, top, the input's going from the top. So let's just let's make it go from the top. Actually, make it go from this face if I can, like that. So then we can put a bucket of liquid into this. In fact, you can do it anyway. You can take this bucket of plastic and like this, and right-click the hopper, and it goes into the hopper. The hopper will then feed it into this. So I've got my bucket back again. But if I look at this again, you see it's still got the 700 milliliters of plastic in there. The other way to do it, of course, you can just right click this with buckets, but you don't want to do that, do you really? It's too time consuming. So anyway, you can put a hopper in it. Probably a lot better. So now we've got 1.1700 millibuckets, which is enough for one piece of plastic. So now we need to get some colors. So let's go and get some, um, bone meal I don't think I think I saw five pieces of bone meal in there but I need a good stack so I'll be back in a second with a stack of bone meal right I've got a some um, a stack of um, a stack of bone meal so you can see here you have to be careful with these Ferdinand flowers this is red clover so when I right click red clover like this it give me it, this is one of the changes I think Danny made you can actually right click small flowers with bone meal um, so the other one I think I need is this one, Morning Glory, which will give me blue. And this one here, which is Yucca, which will give me green. So if you, if you hit the wrong bit, you'll, you'll just burn me all the ground. And you, if you if you just hit it, it'll burn me all the ground around it, which is not what you want. So we can basically take, do this like this. And then we end up with these dyes. So we can simply then click this across like this. Now, if you're not sure which plant a dye belongs to, see this one, a red one here. I can do red ones like this. And with that red one, I can then put that across it. It gives me a red dye. So that's quite useful as well. But if you want to have a look at how, which flowers are Ferdinand's flowers, for example, give you blue, what you do is you type um, at Ferdinand's flowers here. And that's probably enough for this one. And then you can put in the colour. Um, third, if I spell it right. Not Fred flowers. And then you want red. So what the, one of the options in here is to set up a search. And you've got search options in here. So you can actually enable colour. So colour's enabled. It's not by default. And with a with a carrot sign. So we can use the carrot sign and done that one. And then we should be able to select blue. So for example. So that's going to then show you the, the flowers that pretty well, blue basically. So you've got all of these different blues, cloud blue, bell blue, medium blue, and blue flower dye is the one we want so if you have a look at the recipe for that one you can see the different flowers that you can do so there's one page so we've got morning glory or you've got blue bachelor button which i don't know if i haven't found that one yet or you can use straightforward blue dye and there's several types of blue dye there's this one here which is produced from bluebell from nature will produce this so a few ways to get it so anyway that's how I've been doing that. And this, this, the reason I put this um, greenhouse glass on here is you can't bone meal these plants in the winter. If you put, if you put the um, greenhouse glass, you can. So there we go. So now let's come along here and see if we can actually make some plastic. So we can shift click these into here, no problem that's at all like this. You will actually lose the colours. So what we need is now a piece of green glass, like plastic like this. You click it and it produces one piece of green plastic. 
for you. I can actually make more. Um, in fact, I'm surprised that I made it for me because the temperature is 22 degrees. I suppose because this is already liquid plastic. But normally you need to heat this thing. And the way you can heat this thing is with the vortex here like this. I've got a vortex tube here and we can put this down. And when you put it down, it shows you which side is hot and which side is cold. So as you can see, now facing me is hot. So we can then use the, um, the wrench to rotate it. Try shift right. Oh, no, shift right click actually did pick it up. I thought, I thought it was ro would rotate for me. I'm sure it does actually. Try doing it on the top. There we go. So now that's on the top. So then you connect this to power. Power, of course, in pneumatic craft is air pressure. So let's put down some pipes. And we'll do it from the device backwards, of course, because otherwise I'll lose the pressure from this. And then that connects up. And you can see this is going, this is a cold face on here like this. And it's got quite a high cold temperature on here. And the north face is going up in temperature. It's now 34 degrees. So let's have a look at this again. So now we have a temperature of 32 degrees going up. And this, this will car carry on rising up as this as this thing so it's all ready to produce plastic now there are other ways of getting plastic not just from magnetic earth so let's have a look at that before we go because that's the next the next stage so if i look for the recipes of plastic and i do that and then i can't here we go you can also use this thing the thermopneumatic processing plant and where you can take into this some LPG and some coal will produce this. Now all the LPG I've got was going through the refinery and producing plastic anyway. So that was 100 milli because of that produces a bucket of plastic. Now to get LPG, there's another way of doing it. We can again use this thermo pneumatic processing unit. And this time we can take and hit gasoline. Uh, but it needs pressure. So then we have to then give this thing pressure. And the next way after that, and that's going to produce 80, so you get an eighth of this. Gasoline, again, you could have a look at the recipes for gasoline. And again, you can obviously do this in the refineries, we've been doing it before. And pneumatic crust has it's also a refinery process, so you can take oil and you can produce LPG from that one. Ah, oh, didn't know that one. And you can produce gasoline and kerosene and diesel. I think this is a smaller block. Does it tell me? Refineries used to process liquids at different times. So you need to stack each other on top for them to work. Let's have a look at the recipe for this. So diamond and some compressed iron, surprisingly enough, and just some glass. I think the glass looks like it can be any glass because it just changed colour. But we don't need to do that. But what we will do is try doing some of the other ones with this. Um, Maybe it needs pressure. Maybe it needs pressure as well. Does it? Yeah, it produces LPG on top. But that's just like the other, like this one. But uh, probably a little bit cheaper now. You can see this has gone orange. So it's warming up this one. As you can see, the temperature is now 67. And the pressure in this thing should be going down a little bit. What's it say now? We've got a power of three. Yes, it has definitely gone down. Um, so I've got to figure out why these didn't turn off when I when it finished off that. So that so that's it for this episode. Next time, I would like to carry on producing more of these machines and getting at least trying to be able to produce the um, PCBs. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.